Whenever I'm talking to staff about an inclusive program, I, I talk about the fact that we, when we work in inclusive programs, we, we must hold on to two very clear beliefs in each hand, and they're different. And one belief is that children are more alike than different. Children are children first. And in the other hand, they're holding on to the idea that all children are different and have unique needs. One of the aspects of early childhood special education is looking at dispositions. Can you shake them loud? Shake Ready? Them loud. Shake yeah. them loud. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shake them loud. Dispositions are really interpersonal competencies, touch the baby skills. And those kinds of competencies have to do with openness, being warm, the ability to listen. Would you like to try one, Christy? No, not ready. How do you problem solve? Toss that ball. Yeah. Then we get another one of these. You gonna go get it? Yeah. Can roll this one to you. Got it. Oh, thank you. I'll roll it back. Here it comes, Christy. The ability to look at what that child needs, as well as the ability to be responsive. How are you going, Christy? Yeah. And another book? Oh. Barry? Do you want to read this one? And another one? Baby. We'll turn the page. Another baby. Look at this baby has a spoon. So the disposition of being open and understanding that we all learn every day, and that's actually the best thing about being in early childhood special education, because every day something exciting happens in terms of the child's development, and that we all learn from our interactions with children with special needs. Hello. Thank you, Betsy. If you're observing in the classrooms, you will not be able to tell which children are in our inclusion program and which children are the typical peers. We have mixed groups. The children rotate groups for small group activity. There is a special education teacher and there is a special education assistant in the classroom along with a general education teacher and two general education assistants. One of the things for children with disabilities, our federal law requires what's called an individualized education plan. And as needed, the staff will pull both the typical peers and the children with the IEPs aside to work on some skills that need some extra support. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. The type of strategies we use with children with special needs varies child to child. Not all children have the same IEP goals. So if I have a child with the goal that will speak two to three word utterances, so what we're gonna do is we're going to modify a lesson to elicit that type of behavior. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Our theme was nursery rhymes. We did have a book that was a part of the curriculum, but the concepts were too difficult for some of my children. So what we did is we acted out to make it more interesting. So a lot of it is mapping and extending language. Hey, okay, now Benji's Do you want to turn. turn, Benji? Say, Say yes. yes. I want to turn. My turn. My turn. Very good. Okay. One, two, three. And tell teacher Andrea, go. Go. Say go. Go. Good. Yay. Okay. Well, a lot of children that come in that have a more significant disability, like Down syndrome, at birth they were identified, so they've been getting services since they were born. With autism, intellectual disability, Down syndrome, there's usually a more significant speech delay. It's not just articulation and some receptive. It's more maybe they're not using language at all. <laughs> Oh, we need to sharpen the pencil. Let's go sharpen the pencil. 
Some of our staff speaks American Sign Language, so we'll try to put them in a classroom where a teacher can sign with the child, because a lot of times in their other special day class, they're learning some sign. Abuelita. Abuelita? And Eder, Abuelita and Eder are coming? Eder. Abuelita and Eder. Papi's coming? Mama. Mama. Or use more some visual, like a, a picture schedule, so the child can tell us, you know, I need this or I want this. Or the teacher can help explain to the child, this is what we're transitioning to now, so using a picture schedule. Let's look. Lunch. And then, where do we go after lunch? Where do we go? Outside. So one of the things that I encourage administrators and teachers alike is to sit down with families and learn about a child. The most important resource for me in that is the parent. I come in as a newcomer to this child. How are you doing? How was your weekend? I'm gonna take off oh, your helmet. Are you tired today? Oh, 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 come on, let's walk. Walk. Oh, here we go. I got your fingers. Yay! This family comes in with all of the knowledge. They've had all of the experience. In many cases, they have come in contact with an unbelievable number of professionals, doctors and specialists and clinicians. And so that what, what I'm saying is, what have you learned? What works for your child? What do we need to do here? And then we begin to form that team and work together. And it's not just one meeting. It's an ongoing collaboration because things change, as we know in all kids' development, so that we're working together. There you go. Here, you hold on to it and I'll get the door. There is no wait and see in our collaborative service plan. What we're saying is we need to get the right kinds of services to help that child grow and develop, and then we need to monitor that growth in an ongoing manner. There you go. We made it. Say we made it. I'm ready to play. We talk about the issue of environmental access and adaptive equipment, particularly when we're talking about children with disabilities. We've really seen a shift in the focus of that through the years. When I first started in the field, that we were talking a lot about specialized equipment and specialized environments. What we are talking much more, and you hear and you look at and you look in the regulations, we're talking much more about universal design and universal access. The term universal design came from architects in Western Europe. It came about about them really seeing how do we meet the needs of our, all of our population, not just for children, but for adults as well. In universal design, we may have some very specialized equipment, and I love for children to experience that. We're learning about differences. We're learning about all of those things that help people function in the world. Jessica, Jessica, Jessica. There is nothing quite as much fun for a three-year-old as trying out a wheelchair. So how do we begin to create environments that are open and accessible to the broad range of needs of children? I want this. Okay. <gasps> I can take that apart. Oh, okay. That's nice. I like the blue, blue. and gold. I how many large. blue blocks are you using? Go bear. Yellow. It's like a pattern. It is a good pattern. It is surprising that how much of what's good for a child with disabilities around access is going to be good for all little kids. And so when we look at the way we set up our sandboxes, when we look at the way we set up our dramatic play corners, when we look at access and room and ability to move in and out, that's good for all children. This is where I see occupational therapists and physical therapists as unbelievably helpful. To come in and analyze your classroom, not to say, it's around a specific child with a disability, but how can we create a more universally accessible environment? Is this the body or the tail? 
the, the body. The body kind of comes around like this, and the, you see its little face. Elephant game, let's sit down then. Elephants, sit down. Yeah, sit down, elephants. Let's sit down. Elephant game. Okay, come closer, Samantha. We need to rethink our teacher preparation system. And many states have really been moving toward more of a merged teacher preparation system between early childhood special education and early childhood general education. Some states have actually created a conjoined credential. Can you measure? If we're looking at the kind of information that is given to an early childhood special educator, most of that is very applicable to improve programs for all children. So that I think that we, we begin to look at ways that we can analyze that system and see how more of that classwork, preparation work, can be merged. I also think we need more child development in the early childhood special education world. When you look at that credential, they have so many requirements that they don't take enough child development. But I know that we have wonderful projects in some of our Cal States where they really are looking at ways that they work more collaboratively with the child development staff at the campus. <laughs> when I was the superintendent of early childhood in LAUSD, that my final two years, we did all of our professional development was done in, in a cohesive way and so that our specialists in special education worked with our specialists in child development to plan and to present that, that kind of, of, of professional development. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. We had been doing this program there for six and seven years and the principal there called me with a story and that was one of the teachers came to her and said, you know, we're not getting the kind of difficult children that we were getting a few years ago in the center. And the principal looked around at the children that were there and she said, you know what's happened is that because our abilities to serve all children have increased, we don't now see those children as difficult children. <laughs>